Uh, when the women go down to the tomb, the stone is rolled back. So they run back and tell the disciples that the tomb is empty. Well, you know, the disciples being who they were uh, in fear that they themselves might be taken up and uh, put on the cross, uh, they didn't believe the women. But Peter went down to check it out, and sure enough, the tomb was empty. So the Scripture says on that same day, there were two followers of Jesus walking on the road to Emmaus. And we've all heard, I'm sure, that uh, the story of Emmaus. Uh, they were telling Jesus about all the events that had happened. And uh, as they walked along, um, Jesus was telling them that uh, what had happened was that the Scriptures must be fulfilled. And so they were interested in hearing about Jesus uh, and a little bit more of what he had to say, so they invited him to stay overnight. And as they were there in their home uh, having a, a meal, Jesus took bread, broke it, blessed it, and shared it with them. And then their eyes were open when he shared the meal with them. And then they looked around, and, and, and Jesus was gone, gone. Now, had it been me, uh, I might have had uh, serious doubts about whether we were walking with a ghost or not. I mean, if you're in a closed room, right, and you're at a table, and you turn around and the guy's gone, boy, I tell you why, I don't know if my heart could take that. But anyway, so when they were talking about that, uh, their eyes were open, so they went back to Jerusalem, and they told the disciples what had happened. And while uh, they were talking about that, guess who shows up in the room? Jesus, right? And that's when he said, peace be with you. They thought that he was also a ghost. Now, you have to understand, in the time of Jesus, people uh, who thought they seen ghosts, they had to make sure that it wasn't a ghost. And here's how they did it. They would either touch the person to see if he had bones in his arms and so forth, or they would look at him and make sure he was, his feet were on the ground. Can you imagine, you know? Have you ever seen that TV show where that guy does that? Where he lifts himself up off the, off the street? I can't remember his name, but, you know, you have to wonder about that. So uh, Jesus, in his time, people would do that because... Uh, again, evidently, they had this f uh, fixation about people being ghosts. So uh, after Jesus had uh, told them to feel the nail marks in my hands and on my side and so forth, uh, they still were a little dubious. They really didn't believe uh, that he was real. So then the final point of proof for them was that Jesus asked them for something to eat. And they provided him some broiled fish, and Jesus ate it, and their eyes were open. Uh, you know, it's something when we have doubt. It's something when we, again, um, well, let me ask this question. I really want to know this. Any of y'all here believe in ghosts? In this modern day? Wow. I'm astonished. You know why? In the Cherokee tradition, we don't necessarily believe in ghosts. We believe in what we call little people, right? 
I think because of our first encounter with the Europeans, we had met a lot of Scottish and Irish people who were, again, storekeepers and traders and so forth, and they told the Cherokees many stories. I've always thought in the back of my mind that when the Cherokees talk about little people, they're talking about what? Leprechauns, right? Can you imagine a little leprechaun sitting on a post like this? <laughs> and having a feather in his cap, you know? <clears throat> anyway, back to the story. <laughs> Some time back, I've got a little story to tell you. Some time back, uh, there was a young man who had Down syndrome. And he went to Sunday school around Easter time. And so the Sunday school teacher was going to make a little project for him. So she had brought some ladies, what do they call them? Those little pantyhose containers look like eggs, right? A little bit bigger than the plastic eggs, right? So she brought a bunch of them. And her lesson was that because Jesus arose from the dead, he brought new life to the world, right? So she gave her students, including the Down syndrome young man, those plastic eggs and told them to go outside and put something that signifies new life into that egg and bring it back and then share their stories about why they put that certain object into that egg. Sure enough, after they had gathered whatever they needed and came back in the room, they were going to share what their stories were. So as each of them shared the story of why they picked a certain thing, maybe a daisy, maybe a tulip, whatever it was, and put inside that egg, then when it came time uh, for the little boy's egg to be opened, he opened it, the Sunday school teacher did, and opened it, and there was nothing in it. Nothing in his egg. All the kids were saying, that's not right. He didn't follow instructions. He was supposed to have put something in there that means new life. And the little boy says, yes, that's my egg, but you have to understand. He said, the reason I did that is because the tomb was empty. Well, it got quiet, much like it is here right now. And then, some months later, the little boy developed an infection and passed away at his funeral. The Sunday school teacher brought those young students to the funeral, and each of them had an empty egg which they laid in the casket. New life. Our life doesn't end here in this world. We go to a new beginning just like Jesus did when he arose from the tomb. I think that's what Luke is trying to tell us here. Jesus isn't a ghost. Jesus is alive and well today. And more people need to follow that. I think we've come away from our Christianity values and so forth in this world, in society today. And so we need to be reminded Jesus is not in that tomb. 
Jesus is alive and well, just like today when we come forth and share the sacraments. We know not how it happens, but Jesus is present during that time of the Eucharist. The stone has been rolled away, folks. He's not there. We need to be like Jesus told those disciples. Go into all nations and talk about forgiveness and repentance. And we need to be witnesses to the word that Jesus is still alive today, alive and well. Thanks be to God. Amen. I always end the sermons by saying, God is good. And then the response is all the time, all the time, the response is God is good. God is good all, all the time. time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. 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 Blessed be with you. Thank you.